What's up everybody? Welcome back to the book space where we do book reviews and tell stories. In today's video, I am going to be talking about Jamie Salmons and the Catcher in the Rye. Uh, if it's your first time here, welcome. Give this video a thumbs up if you love it so that I will know to make more content like this. And don't forget to press the subscribe button so that you will get notified every time I release awesome content. Uh, without further ado, I will read for you the first chapter, the, not the first chapter, the first uh, paragraph of the book. Interestingly, I just noticed it just now that the first paragraph of this book literally is the whole page. <laughs> and the first state, the first sentence uh, goes up to here. That's like a paragraph in some books. So it's, this is going to be really interesting. So I'm going to read for you the first uh, paragraph so that you can get a taste of the language and the writing style of the app, of the author. Okay, so it goes like this. If you really want to hear about it, the first thing you probably want to know is where I was born and what my lousy childhood was like and how my parents were occupied and all before they had me and all that David Copperfield kind of crap. But I don't feel like going into it if you want to know the truth. In the first place, that stuff bores me. And in the second place, my parents would have about two hemorrhages apiece if I told anything pretty personal about them. They're quite touchy about anything like that, especially my father. Um, they're nice and all, I'm not saying that, but they're also as touchy as hell. Uh, besides, I'm going to tell you my whole goddamn autobiography. Besides, I'm not going to tell you my whole goddamn autobiography or anything. I'll just tell you about this madman stuff that happened to me about last Christmas, just before I got pretty run down and, and had to come out here and take it easy. I mean, that's all I told DB about, and he's my brother and all. He's in Hollywood. That isn't too far from this crummy place. Um, and he comes over and visits me practically every weekend. He's going to drive me home when I go home next month, maybe. He, got, he just got a Jaguar, one of those little English jobs that can do around 200 miles an hour. It cost him damn near 4,000 bucks. He's got a lot of dough now. He didn't used to. Um, he used to be just a regular writer when he was home. He wrote this terrific book of short stories, The Secret Goldfish, in case you never heard of him. The best one in it was The Secret Goldfish. It was about this little kid that wouldn't let anybody look at his goldfish because he bought it with his own money. It killed me. Now he's out in Hollywood, DB, being a prostitute. If there's one thing I hate, it's the movies. Don't even mention them to me. <laughs> so that's the kind of writing style um, of this book. So just to give you like a, a plot of the book, right? So this book is centered around Holden Caulfield. Holden Caulfield, at the time he writes this book, is about 17 years old. And he's telling us a story um, of what happened to him in the last weekend um, at his school, it, it's called Pensy Prep, um, when he was 16 years old. So this whole book basically covers about three to four days, um, starting from when he was at, he, on his last day at that school. And so we see <laughs> the way we see Holden trying to how can I even put it? So he's telling us his story, and in telling us his story, he's he's telling us also about all the relationships that he had at the time, his relationship with his parents, his relationship with his little sister, and a couple of things that happened to him in his past, like his his brother, um, his younger brother who had passed away. Um, and so we see we see him trying to process that and trying to process all the change that's going on in his life because like as, as it gets revealed in his in the book in the first little section of the book he's He's being thrown out of Pensy Prep because he, he's, he's, he keeps saying it, that I flunked out of the school. So because his grades are not really good, he's being asked to leave the school. And so 
that's a major change that's happening. And then as well, him being a teenager, we all know that teenagehood is a major change for anybody. So that's a major change that's happening in his life. We also see um, him talking about the passing of his younger bro brother, as I mentioned, that's a huge change for anybody. And that's like a lot um, to process. So I feel like in, in, in some way, uh, Holden is grieving. In some ways, Holden is trying to find himself. In some ways, Holden um, is looking to connect with somebody and to be heard by somebody. But time and time again, we see with his relationships, he's trying to say something, although not articulately, not, uh, I guess, in the best way possible, but he's trying to communicate and to connect. But each time, the connection is just not happening. Um, but then, good to see that, like, um, he's he absolutely adores his little sister, uh, Phoebe, and we see that in the end, they, he at least that connection is solid and that connection is there. And so this was a, this was a, this is a classic. So it was, it was set in the 40s. I'm not really sure when J.D. Salinger actually wrote it, but it was set in the 40s and it's been, it's been around for a long time. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I think there's anything here that I can see. Yeah. Um, published 1950. First published, uh, first British edition published by Hamish Hamilton in 1951. Um, well, actually, it was first, first, first published in the U.S. in 1945. So it was set in the 40s, and it was published in the 40s. Um, so yeah, it was it was really interesting to see like just those three days, him trying to, uh, trying to connect, trying to find, find himself in a way because he, he he's talking about running away and going and finding a job and living in the cabin in the in the woods. So. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very interesting story. Um, in, critically speaking about it, like analyzing it critically, um, from a couple of videos I've watched, uh, people say that um, Holden is... <sighs> Holden is trying to, um, to retain his to hold on to his childhood so that and hold on to everything that it, to in, make everything remain the same like when he goes to the museum and he's um he, he mentions that like the the glass the glass um the images in the glass like the glass presentations you know how they they set up things in the glass of a different time in a different era um, and say, okay, this is how the, the birds flew to the north, and they always in the same place and always preserved. And he was saying that he like he liked that things were the way they were when he was a child when he came to the museum. It was the same. And then the title comes up when he's talking about telling Phoebe that the thing that he would like to do is to be the catcher in the rye, where he would be the one where there will be a few. A, a, filled full of kids um, who are running and he would be the person that would catch them uh, if they if they start running over a cliff, that that's what he would want to do and want to be. Um, so there as well, we see that he wants to hold on to, um, to innocence, to hold on to childhood, to hold on to make, to let everything stay the same. Uh, the other idea that came up that I heard somebody talk about was um, was that in the in the last scene of one of the last in the last chapter of the book, um, he takes his sister Phoebe um, to uh, to 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 go for a ride on the carousel, and she all the other kids were choosing all the nice fancy horses, but his sister went and sat on the old beat up brown horse that everybody else was ignoring. Um, and somebody was saying that that signifies that he, her, her sister, unlike everybody else who was in his life, that was just moving on and not seeing him and not taking the time 
to hear him. Her, his sister Phoebe, who went and chose the old built beat up horse that everybody else was ignoring, it was like a representation of the of hearing him, of seeing him, of accepting him. Um, yeah, so it was really really good in terms of the language of the book. Holden, 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 Holden. He's his language can be a bit off-putting because, he, yeah, he, he he swears, he says, damn, he says, you know, as you heard me in the first um, in the first paragraph, he, yeah, his language can be a little bit colorful. So that would be the only negative thing that I'd say. But otherwise, the book was very engaging. I absolutely loved it. Um, the story was interesting and it, it it moved it moved really really well I thought um, and what was the other thing um, I thought Holden always said a lot of everybody else was so phony I thought he was the phoniest of them all because like he would say something and then do some do it do the opposite like he, you heard in the first chapter where he said oh um, I don't like the movies don't even talk to me about movies. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about movies. And then now we hear him. He says, um, uh, he goes with his friends to the movies. Uh, okay, so I'll start here where he says, um, the bus driver opened the doors and made me throw it out, which was like a, an ice, ice ball that he'd made. I told him I wasn't going to chuck it at anybody, but he wouldn't believe me. People never believe you. Bossard and Ugly both had seen the picture that was playing, so all we did was just had a couple of hamburgers and played the pinball machine for a little while, then took the bus back to Pensy. I didn't care about not seeing the movie anyway. It was supposed to be a comedy with Gary, with Cary Grant in it and all that crap. Besides, I'd been to the movies with Bossard and Ugly before. They, they both laughed like hyenas at stuff that wasn't even funny. I didn't even enjoy sitting next to them in the movies. So why were you going with them to the movies then? And why are you going to the movies? Because you don't even want to hear about movies. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, just, like, say what you mean and what you say. Why are you going to the movies if you don't like movies? <laughs> and then this habit that he had of coming to conclusion just because of one event that had happened. <laughs> I didn't understand it. I just thought it was, it was interesting. Like for like for instance, this part here where he says, um, uh, the bus driver opened the doors and made me throw it out. I told him I wasn't going to chuck it at anybody, but he didn't believe me. People never believe you. Like, do you have data to uh, to prove your point, sir? Holden Caulfield? <laughs> like just out of that one driver who didn't believe that he wouldn't throw stuff something at people, he then concluded that people never believed you. And he does that a couple of times. Like it's mad like I, I found I felt I found it maddening. I found it maddening. Like why? Why hold and Caulfield? Why? <laughs> but then yeah, it was a it was a really, really good read. Um I thought it was really engaging, it was really good. Um uh, let me know in the comment section below if you've read the catcher in the right and what your thoughts were about the book because it just about killed me <laughs> if you know you know um yeah thank you so much guys for hanging out with me today i really appreciate your company uh please let me know in the comments section below if you read this book if you loved it and what your thoughts were on the book um if you have any book recommendations of what you want me to read next and review please don't hesitate to leave uh, a comment in the comment section below. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you loved it so that I would know to make more content like this. And um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, so that uh, you will be notified every time.